Hi, I'm Hillsborough County Commissioner Sandy Merman. I'd like to take this opportunity to remind you how important it is to take time to prepare and make a plan for hurricane season. I'm Tim Dudley, your emergency manager. We've learned many valuable lessons over the years and want everyone to be as prepared as possible this storm season. In these uncertain times, it's more important than ever to have a plan and be prepared. COVID-19 has shown us that coming together as a community and being resilient is key. Our team is working hard to keep Hillsborough County ready for any disaster and to provide our residents with resources in case of a hurricane. To make sure you're ready this year, the first thing you need to do is to sign up for HCFL Alert. You'll receive current emergency information by phone or email. Next, make a plan with your loved ones. Knowing your evacuation zone and evacuation route is crucial. If you have to evacuate, consider reaching out to friends and families that live outside the evacuation zone to see if they can host you. If staying with friends or family isn't an option, you can always consider hotels or motels outside of the evacuation zones. That's right, Hillsborough County emergency shelters are lifeboats, not cruise ships. They should be considered a last resort to keep your family safe. If Hillsborough County emergency shelters are your only option to evacuate, come prepared. You'll need some additional items this year, including face masks, gloves, hand sanitizers, and other personal items. At Hillsborough County emergency shelters, you should be prepared to practice social distancing and come with your emergency kit and the items your family needs. Remember, shelters are not a resort, their last resort. They won't offer any amenities and resources may be limited. During storm season, you should also keep your gas tank full and keep your emergency kit close at hand. Make sure to check supplies in that kit, including medication, radio, flashlights, and batteries. And as we mentioned, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, please include face masks or coverings, hand sanitizers, and gloves. I want to echo what Commissioner Merman just said. These additions are essential for your health and that of others, especially if you need to go to a county shelter. In addition, do not forget to pre-register loved ones who require special needs accommodations. Hillsborough has programs in place to help those individuals prepare and find safe shelter. And don't forget about our furry friends. You'll need food, a pet carrier, proof of current vaccination, and your animal's county registration tag. Have a plan, plan know, know your, your plan. plan. For more information, please visit hcflgov.net slash stay safe. Thank you. Hillsborough County, along with local and federal health experts, are encouraging residents to wear cloth face masks to cover their nose and mouth when in public to help stop the spread of COVID-19. There are not enough surgical face masks for everyone, and available ones should go to healthcare workers and first responders. It's easy to make your own face mask out of common household items. The CDC and U.S. Surgeon General say you can use an old scarf, bandana, or make one using a t-shirt plus two rubber bands. Cut part of the t-shirt into a square, fold it from the bottom to the middle, then from the middle to the top. Repeat those steps one more time, then add a rubber band to each side. Bring each end to the middle, then secure around your face. They should fit snugly, but comfortably. Cloth face covering should not be placed on children younger than two years of age or people who have trouble breathing. The CDC emphasizes that while wearing a face mask, you should still practice social distancing, stay six feet apart from others, and continue other preventative measures such as frequent hand washing. We encourage you to visit hcflgov.net slash stay safe for up-to-date information. 
Is your local business or organization looking to give back to the community? Help keep our roads clean by joining the Adopt a Road program administered by Keep Tampa Bay Beautiful. Keeping our roads clean is a great way for team building as well as exposure for your business. Select the road your business wants to adopt and dispatch a team to remove litter and debris. Participants will receive two signs showing their organization's name as well as safety equipment and instructions for cleaning roads. You can help keep Tampa Bay beautiful by adopting your own road today. To learn more, visit hcflgov.net forward slash clean HC. Hello, I'm WWE superstar Titus O'Neil, and today I'm coming to you as a neighbor. You owe it to yourself and those you love to get tested now. Get the care you need and protect your family. Hillsborough County is offering free coronavirus testing and no health insurance is needed. It costs you nothing to get tested. Visit hcflgov.net slash stay safe for more information and have a reservation made today. Share this with a neighbor and let's come together as a community and keep fighting to get through this. Together, we will come back stronger. God bless. So let's say that Tim here was returning to his vehicle only to find it missing. He may think it was either stolen or towed. Let's not worry too much, Tim. Hillsborough County wants you to know the rules and regulations should you find yourself stuck in this unfortunate situation. Here are a few rules and tips you should know. Rule number one, permission to tow. Towing services need permission to tow from private property and must post signs with telephone numbers saying that the trespassing vehicles will be removed. If your vehicle is missing, look for a sign and call the number. Rule number two, communication. As soon as your vehicle is delivered to the local towing facility, towing services must notify local law enforcement within a 30 minute time frame. And they must return calls from vehicle owners within one hour. Helpful tip number one. Law enforcement can help motorists determine if their vehicle has been towed. If you don't see a posted sign, call the authorities on the non-emergency line. Rule number three, retrieving your vehicle during a tow. Most people are unaware that you can still retrieve your vehicle while connected to the tow truck. For a drop fee of no more than half the towing rate, the tow truck operator must release the vehicle to its owner. When it comes to payment, tow truck drivers must accept the following, debit, cash, cashier's check, or money order. Rule number four, personal property. If the owner is unable to pay the drop fee and their vehicle is in the hands of the towing company, owners still have the right to retrieve personal property from their vehicle. Helpful tip number two. Having a registration and title in your name will make it easier to recover your vehicle. Tow companies will not hand over the vehicle if you are not the registered owner, unless you have an original notarized affidavit signed by the registered vehicle owner. Remember, Hillsborough County is here to help you. For complete detailed information on towing rules and regulations, please visit us at hcflgov.net slash consumer protection, or give us a call at 813-635-8316. Hillsborough County has opened a majority of its conservation parks, trails, and nature preserves to give residents additional options for recreation and exercise. While parks can provide an escape and excitement, county leaders are urging residents to take precautions to protect themselves. To help stop the spread of COVID-19 while in public places, use common sense. Stay home and avoid parks if you're feeling sick. Practice social distancing, avoid groups or gatherings larger than 10, and stay at least six feet from others while exercising. In addition to social distancing, Hillsborough County leaders continue to urge residents to wear cloth face coverings when in community settings. Bring your own water. Though parks are opening, many amenities will remain closed. Prepare for your visit by packing necessary items like hand sanitizer, and it's a good idea to bring your own disinfectant wipes to wipe down.
Hello, and welcome to the Hillsborough County Historic Resources Review Board meeting. Uh, today is Tuesday, August 18th. It's approximately 3 p.m. We are meeting for our regularly scheduled meeting. Uh, we're meeting here digitally uh, via Zoom, and so we'll go ahead and get started with our agenda. Uh, first things first, I would like to check with uh, Nancy. Nancy, do we have a quorum for today's meeting? Yes, you do, Mr. Hellman. Perfect. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, and everybody's here, and so we're, we're good to go. So we will move right along with our regular scheduled meeting items. Uh, first things first is we will move um, or look at the minutes. So if everybody, uh, all of our uh, board members, please review the minutes from our July meeting. Um, and if there are any questions or comments at this time for the minutes, we'll take them now. Otherwise, if there are no questions or comments, we're looking for a motion for approval. So moved. Second. Okay, we had, uh, and who made that motion? Charlie Nelson. Yes. We did, and then uh, Curtis second. Uh, any other comments or discussion about the minutes? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor of approving the minutes as presented, say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Okay, minutes are approved as presented. Uh, moving right along, uh, we do not have any guest speakers or public comment for this particular meeting. So we will move right along to our staff items. Uh, item C number one, uh, Tom, would you take that away, please? Yes, sir. Uh, item C1 is uh, uh, for informational purposes only. It's a copy of the certificate of appropriateness approval for COA 2020-1. Uh, which you approved at your last meeting for the Costa Chandra House designated historic landmark. In connection with this, uh, uh, you know, the you had recommended approval for the uh, historic preservation grant. Uh, that uh, agenda item has been prepared for the county commission and should go in front of the board at their September 8th uh, land use meeting. Tom, is that something that the homeowners address at the BOCC meeting? You, uh, who's the one that specifically talks about the grant proposal? Uh, actually, the grant is on the consent agenda. Okay. I'll be amazed if the board pulls it off. They haven't done in the past. So there's a block of items, all kinds of things, including right away vacations, this, that, and the other thing that they just approve as one big block vote unless they have questions about it. They haven't had questions in the past, so. Okay. Okay, perfect. Uh, any other questions about item C1? Okay, here and then moving on to item number C2. Tom, take it away. Yep. This also is for informational purposes only, and it's a copy of the uh, approval letter that was sent out for COA 2020-02. Uh, for uh, construction of a detached garage at the Adams Thiessen House designated historic landmark. Sounds good. Uh, any questions or comments for Tom regarding this item? Okay, uh, hearing none, we will move right along. Uh, so that brings us up to item D1 on our agenda, the front door replacement for the old Lutz Schoolhouse building. Uh, board members, um, you received some backup information, item D1, uh, regarding the uh, replacement um, and information there, so please refer to that. Uh, we also have representatives of the property, uh, the Nevilles here speaking with us. Uh, first, I ask Tom to give us an overview, um, and then we'll pass it on to uh, the Nevilles. So, Tom, go ahead. Okay, yes, and this is a COA application to replace the front doors at the old Loot Schoolhouse on Highway 41. Uh, the property is actually owned by the county, and you'll see that the county uh, facilities management uh, signed off on this application because it is owned by the county. However, it is, it's leased by citizens for the old Luke School, and the applicants today are, uh, can, are uh, it, with that organization. Mr. Neville, I believe, is the current chairman. Uh, mm -hmm. So they've uh, you know, submitted the application. Uh, it's simply, uh, I can state that uh, uh, this hearing, uh, the COA applications are the only thing that are required to be noticed under uh, the rules for the HRB. 
I can confirm, uh, and they're noticed by a sign posted on the property. I can confirm that this this uh, uh, hearing was properly noticed by timely posting of the sign, so this hearing is in order. Um, and uh, pretty for straightforward, I, I'm just going to leave it up to the Nevels to describe in detail their project, if that's okay with you, I, unless if any kind of further information is needed from me. No, nope. uh, I think that should be good. So we'll hand it over to the Nevels. Uh, if you want to address the committee, you may do so at this time. Good afternoon, committee. I'm Beth Neville Rader, and my brother Ben Neville is the chair of the board for the citizens for the Old Lute School. As you see in the application, the school was actually built and opened in 1927. Uh, the front doors uh, at this point need to be replaced. Uh, we are using like products, uh, like design. There should have been an architectural drawing uh, submitted with the application uh, for your review. Uh, and I can share that with the board if you, one second. Let me share, uh, they all received it, but let me go ahead and share the architectural drawing. There, does everyone see that? Yes. Yep. Okay. Okay. Uh, and basically the doors are reaching their end of life and functionability. So it's strictly a, a replacement repair. And yes, he's go up a little bit. You'll see the doors that are be replacing it. Let me, uh, let's nine, think we're at the end. Nine, nine windows, okay. two panels on the bottom, white wood. Yep, there we go. Yep, yep. Everyone see the picture of the existing doors? Yeah. Yeah. Yep, there we go. That's what's there now. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, so it, at this time, uh, board members, if you have any questions for the Nevels, uh, now would be that time. This is Becky. Um, I'm guessing that those aren't probably the original doors from 1927. I don't know if you would have any past history on that, but I mean, they may look very similar to what was there originally, but it seems highly unlikely that they would have lasted that long. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's a true statement. We actually have drawings from the county. Well, the last time they did major work on this project was in 1997 and the front doors shown on those uh, architectural and building drawings are these doors. So I don't know what was there uh, back in 1927. We don't have records for that. I just thought maybe old pictures may show it. Uh, and I assume you'll be painting them white or what color are you gonna be painting the, the exterior of the door? It will be white. Well, I appreciate that you're trying to match it as close as possible. That's a real, you know, advantageous look to keep it as close as possible. Thank you. Okay. Uh, any other questions or comments uh, for the Nevels or for Tom regarding this? This I have a just a, a comment. Um, it doesn't have to do with anything of our approval or disapproval or acceptance, but um, I noticed that the bid was from the ninth, uh, November of 2019. Are they gonna stay good on your bid for you? No. No, they won't. The doors have already been purchased. We were gonna use that as an in-kind with the, the historical preservation grant and we failed to get the application uh, completed in a timely manner. So the only thing we have to go back out for is the, the actual work. The labor. Okay, sounds good. Uh, since this is a, a COA certificate of appropriateness, uh, this committee does have the authority to approve or deny that. Um, and so that's what this committee will be looking for, a motion uh, either way regarding approval or denial of the application as presented. Um, so if anybody would like to make a motion for or against, and that's what we're looking for now. I, I would recommend that we approve the front door replacement at the old Luke schoolhouse as shown on the documents that were submitted. I'll second that. 
Okay, we have a motion on the floor from Becky, a second from Charles. Uh, Becky, uh, any uh, rationale with that motion? Well, the fact that they're keeping with the same look as they had before, they're not really changing the overall character or architecture of the existing building, but they do need to replace it because it is coming, it will become a hazard over time. Okay. Sounds good. So we have a motion on the floor with a rationale and a second. Any other questions or comments uh, with this motion? Okay. Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion as presented, say aye. 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 All those who disapprove, say nay. Okay. The ayes have it. Motion passes. Thank you so much. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Go back to me now. Just so you guys are aware, so uh, Tom will issue um, the appropriate letter, um, and so that way you guys have that in your packet, um, and then that way you can move forward with the work uh, based on the approval with this motion from this committee. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Appreciate it. Y'all have a good, safe day. Thank you. Okay, uh, moving on to item uh, E. Uh, any new business for discussion uh, for the committee today? relatively light agenda, so that was not, not too long of a meeting. Um, I will say this is uh, going to be my last HHRB meeting. Um, I've been just finished up my three-year term, uh, so I've enjoyed serving on the committee with everybody, and I appreciate everybody uh, you know, serving on the committee. So thanks, everybody, much for a good last three years. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Nico. Uh, we, yeah, we certainly appreciate your um, service to the community and interest in and historic preservation as well. Um, also, Mr. Sar Santarlis, I understand that you not, did not uh, apply for reappointment. I correct? did not do the traveling extensively this uh, past summer. Right, and then I believe you your term, you may be here for the next meeting in September. I'm not exactly sure when your term expires. But yes, sir, I'm waiting for direct direction from you. Yeah, I've asked uh, Lou Ann Finley for confirmation on when your terms expire. And I'll let you know. Um, the last thing is uh, uh, in our July meeting, you had deferred election of officers to the September meeting. Uh, but knowing that a couple of the board members uh, had, uh, particularly Mr. Homan, had indicated that he may not, you know, seek reappointment. So he wanted to defer until then, till September. Um, if I could get some direction uh, from the members who will still be on the board uh, in September. Uh, usually, you know, if there's no business that is uh, required for the board's attention, uh, the meeting is usually canceled by the board chairman uh, because, right, if there's nothing for you to review. Uh, let me ask you, if uh, if there is no business that requires your attention in September, is it the consensus of the board that you still wish to meet in order to elect officers? I think I say no. <laughs> no, uh, Mr. Mr. Brown. Is are we able to wait until the next meeting that there is business? Uh, that would that'd be fine. Uh, Mr. Nelson. I don't have any objection. I don't think we need to meet if we don't have any business. Okay, Mr. Crutchfield. Yeah, I concur. That's fine. Okay. All right. Well, then, yeah. If we uh, if there's no business, then we uh, I'll go ahead and cancel the meeting. Uh, certainly alert everyone to that. Um, uh, and then uh, there has been a recent you know, our most recent recruitment had two applicants. Well, one was found to not be qualified for any seats. The other, uh, we found me and Nancy that they qualify for the vacant seat that uh, the requirements, uh, uh, one of them is that you have a real estate broker license. And so she's a licensed broker. However, she also applied for uh, uh, several openings on various boards simultaneously. You can only be appointed to one. Uh, I'm not sure she ranked preference, in which case they're filled alphabetically. 
So uh, even though uh, one applicant was found qualified, whether she ends up being appointed or not, we'll, we'll have to see. So we may be gaining one more board member, maybe not. If that were to happen- How many vacancies do we have? I'm sorry? How many vacancies do we have? Um, well, there's seven uh, uh, regular members and two alternates, I believe, uh, which is nine. Uh, as far as seats, we've never filled all of them. Uh, so uh, we'll be down to four after Mr. Homan and Dr. Santarlos leave, uh, which, you know, we've worked with before. Uh, so. And four is a consensus? You need four for a quorum. A quorum, I'm sorry, a quorum. Yes, yeah, that's so that, that's Yeah, if, if such time we fall below four or... Uh, so does that mean that four have to actually attend the meeting for a quorum? Yeah. Yes. And so it's not based on the number of filled seats. It's based on. No, it's not. Okay. It's not. All right. Um, if that appointment were to occur, mm -hmm. would it yes, be sir. before the September meeting or the October meeting? I, I'd have to give me one second. Let me check my emails from Luann. If you can wait one second, please. Uh, give me one second to check those. Your whole screen's showing us all still up, Tom. Oh, oh, I'm still sharing. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll stop sharing. There we go. Sorry. All right. Okay. Uh, one second. So, Nita, did you apply for another board? No, ultimately, I decided to, to step back. Um, I just got a lot of work to do. And so, unfortunately, uh, not next year, but possibly the 2021-2022 um, cycle. I'll sign up again. Yes, uh, uh, Lou Ann's email that I'm looking at didn't specify when they're going to the board. Um, but she needed to find out from me and Nancy by August 28th whether the applicants were qualified. So I suspect uh, your next meeting is September 15th. Uh, I think there's a fair chance that the appointments by the board will occur before the 15th, at which point I would immediately notify the new member, you know, welcome her to the board, you know, give her the link to the meeting and all that. Thank you. Okay, I have nothing else. Oh, also, yes, Mr. Sartell, this may be your last meeting as well. We definitely would like to express our gratitude for you serving on the board as well as with, uh, and your service to the community. Thank you, Tom. You're welcome. A pleasure working with everybody. Who is the current vice chair? That would be me. Yeah, we're, we're losing the chair and the That's vice chair. That's what I chair. thought. So. Oh. So. Um, yeah. so, yes, I guess the first order of business at the next meeting will be to elect a chair and a vice chair. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be first on the agenda. <laughs> okay. Uh, any other new business or anything else worth discussing? Okay. Hearing none, our meeting adjourned. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you.